All right, guys, welcome back to another uh, Tackle Talk. This is uh, going to be... Episode number three. This one, we're going to cover jigs. Um, I'm going to stick primarily to your standard weighted head, jig hook, uh, you know, your skirts and stuff. And then he's got a few other extras. Mine just... I have too many, so I carry different boxes for each of them. I might go all over the place with this one. I don't know yet. All right, well, we're going to start with the actual jigs, and then I'll let him finish up with everything else. We'll see where it goes. And then if you guys want another video uh, of all my other stuff, like my chatter baits and my... Uh, I don't carry my swim jigs in here. Um, and then if you want, uh, we also have slither rigs. Um, I mean, like jigs, you know, part two. Yeah, basically. It'd just, be, it'd just be the extra stuff that I have that I carry in other boxes. All right, so I'm going to start off. This is probably my favorite jig ever. Um, this is a Strike King Finesse football head jig. You guys can see it's, it's a smaller head. Um, this style of jig for me, uh, around here, being that we have pressured bodies of water, are uh, um, better for us than, say, something like this, which is a big football head jig. Um, it's just that smaller profile, and it just generally uh, gets us a few more bites. Might be smaller bites, but we get a few more in the tougher situations. Um, I guess I would start with my jigs. I mean, I'm not a little more... Uh, not more in quantity, but uh, a few different, more uh, more styles than he does, uh, available at this moment. Um, I guess I'm going to start off with one of the ones that I really don't curl a whole lot of, but he's had a lot of success on. And that is a vibrating jig. Um, otherwise, chatterbait, otherwise depending on chatterbait. what brand you look at, basically. Um, That's the Z-Man. It's the Z-Man. Um, it's really the only style chatterbait I throw. I throw a few brands, but generally I stick to the Z-Mans. Uh, some they, of the other brands are harder for us to find unless we order them. Um, we do have Picasso's around us, um, but $16 for a Chatterbait versus $8, $8. for a Chatterbait. And they work good yeah, for what we It's hard to beat the do. price for us. Um, there is a multiple, there's multiple colors that this comes in. Um, it's just a standard jig hook with a little, with a little you know, bait keeper on there. And then... You know everything else a chatterbait would have. Um, like I said, I don't throw him a whole lot, but he's had a lot of success on him in the spring. So here, let me see that real fast if you don't mind. Okay, so this is your uh, this is your standard Z-Man. All right, guys, sorry we got interrupted again. Um, but no, I was I was going to talk about. Okay, so this is your standard Z-Man chatterbait. If you guys can see that head, um, That's the a... ones I really like are the elites. If you guys can find the elites, the place that I find them is Field and Stream. If you guys have a Field and Stream. So this one right here will normally run you about six bucks, but if you can buy the elites, I think they're eight or nine. But you have a a whole different style head. You got a I don't a have swim a, jig. Uh, yeah. I'm, well, do you want? Okay. Yeah, that's perfect. Um. So if you guys know the uh, uh, six cents divine swim jig, that's my favorite swim jig. That's what I I throw. But it's it's gonna be. It's basically going to be this style of head, like a swim bait head. It's going to be a little shorter, but it's going to have the eyes. It has more detail. It also ends up having, I think, a little bit better of a hook in the uh, in the uh, chatter baits. Um, but if you guys can afford them and you guys can find them, it's that's the hardest worth, part. If you can find them, it's worth the extra couple. Bucks. It's definitely worth the extra couple bucks. I notice I get a lot more bites off of. Off the elites than I do the regulars, but like I said, it's hard for us to find them. Um, our closest field and stream is 45 minutes from us, so we kind of have to make a trip out of it if we want to go pick up a few of them. And um, then I end up spending way more than I wanted to to begin with. Um, here, so I'll these back though. You, you like throwing the, the chatter baits? Um, I've got them because I've thrown them before. I haven't had too much springtime for me. Uh, I'm sure you guys saw a few of those videos. Um, if not, they're they were, they're already posted up. There's a few of our earlier videos. I did pretty well with a uh, all white chatterbait in the springtime. Um, and it was it was actually a Z man. That he the actual Z man, just that same exact model and everything. Uh, I did I did well. Um, we had slightly muddy water, and I noticed our uh, our rattle trap bite wasn't working as well as it was a few weeks ago or a few weeks prior to when we were filming that video. And so I put, I picked up one of them white chatter baits and instantly had success with it. So I, I stuck with it for a few days until they switched off that bite. And then, you know, 
Moved on to something else. All right, the next one I'm going to talk about with, it's basically, it's just like the football style head, you know, the fat finesse that I was showing you. But it's going to be a cross between your football head of this size and a finesse. So this is a tungsten jig head, and you'll notice that how similar in size they are. Um, they're not too much different. But this one I think is three, almost three quarters of an ounce or something like that. It's and then it maybe it's not that much. Maybe it's half an ounce. It's a lot heavier than this is. This is, I think, quarter ounce or three eighths. It's very light. But this is the same style skirt and everything, but it's a lot heavier. So I can cast farther. I can. It gets down to the bottom better. I feel better with it because it's tungsten. So if you guys can find these, uh, these are heavy metal tungsten jigs. Um, Mystery Tack Box sent these out two or three months ago. Um, this one happens to be in PB&J color. Really nice skirt on it, a lot of glitter in it. Um, but if you guys can afford to throw tungsten jigs um, over your lead head style jigs, definitely. Which one you want to pick up with? Um, I guess I'll go with just a football head. Football head? So, this is one of the recent ones I picked up. You saw it in the tech unboxing video. It's just a um, three quarter ounce football head jig in watermelon red flake color. I got that paired up with a, a crawl. This is going to probably get the most use um, for its size and stuff during the summer. Just, I'd say casting it out, and you know, dragging it. dragging it on the bottom. When I'm throwing my big worms, that's probably what he'll be throwing. Probably the big old jig. It's a bigger profile. You know, I might trim the skirt down just a little bit, which is another good thing. You, um, you guys can try trimming the skirt. I always trim my skirts down. Um, um, right to the back of the hook. Do you notice? Th this one's actually a little long. If you guys can notice that hook that's in there, it's just barely past there, where that, um, uh, where the bend of the right hook here. is. And that's because, like, especially on these finesse jigs, we generally throw smaller jig trailers, like your small rage crawls, and you don't want like you don't want these um, silicone strands coming all the way down to the end of the claws because then you lose a lot of your action and stuff. So I definitely, I generally trim up pretty pretty tight to them. Um, actually, speaking of trimming up the trailers, I've actually got an example here for you. They're the exact same jig um, in every aspect, color, size, everything. Just this one here is with an untrimmed skirt. I don't know if you guys can see the hook, you know, just follow it in the skirt. And then here's one trimmed. Um, that one I, on the right's a little It's a little short, short but the reason I trimmed it short is because it matches the, um, some of the smaller fish that we got in there. The yeah. Smaller thread fins. We, we kind of have to be careful. Um, you know, you see a lot of these, these YouTubers fishing down South Texas, you know, Georgia, all that stuff. We don't really have that luxury. We don't have the, the, the super big bite constantly. Like if we catch it, a four pounder here, it's, it's like literally like catching an eight or nine somewhere else. It's it's tough for us to find that size here in Ohio. Um, a four pounder here is like you said, it's like a nine somewhere else. Our biggest bass out of Ohio lot this year that we've caught personally between the two of us. Well, technically, it's last year. Cause it's just well, it was last year. I forgot it was 2018. 2018, though. though. Um, the biggest bass we caught last year in 2017 between the two of us was four and a half pounds. Four and a half. He had, he had one at four and a half out of Inglewood, out um, of a Metro Park, and then I had, you had uh, a couple three that were right around the four and a quarter mark at um, another Metro Park, our, our close one. And then, like I said, we had we saw two that were almost five pounds. There was, one was four nine six, I think, and one was five oh two. And other than that, there wasn't any any real big ones. I saw one uh, that a kid lost out of our uh, local pond. Uh, that was probably every bit of five five and a half pounds. I did catch one years ago. Um, that probably would have been close to six, or around six. Um, of course, I was by myself at the time. I didn't have a GoPro or anything, so. I snagged the best pictures I could, but it's really hard to tell the size in the pictures. Um, and even then, our biggest bass last year, um, it came from South Carolina. We yeah. happened to go down there for a week and found a pond that we could fish and popped out. I'm of sure it. you guys have seen those videos too. They're pretty if good not, on I'll put a channel. picture up of it um, in this video. Uh, and believe it or not, we first caught that fish. We thought that fish was going eight plus, 
and we were shocked to find out it only went five eight, I believe. Yeah, it was five, eight. five eight. Um, the problem was we did, we just hadn't seen any fish that size. So I mean, we probably weren't used to it, but uh, we weighed it. Came out five eight. Um, still the biggest bass last year. We're hoping to top that this year if we can. If not, we're maybe some go. maybe some peacock bass in the future. Maybe this this, this year. Maybe, maybe this maybe this summer peacocks might be, show up, which would be really cool. Um, maybe okay. um, some spotted bass. We may be going to the Ohio River at some point. Uh, maybe some stripers with, might show up, dude. Some stripers might show up. Our, our one of our uh, local no electric uh, motor lakes has some pretty big stripers and hybrids in it. Um, but. One of the guys we fish with, because uh, he has a he has a, a boat, um, is a uh, ex uh, co angler in the FLW, and he was actually pretty successful in the FLW. And so back boated with Kevin Van Dam multiple times. Yeah, uh, all the big names that you see now, he probably fished with when they were coming up, and so. And uh, the, the guy knows his stuff. Yeah, he's, and he's he's, taught he's us not a lot. afraid to share information with us. So. Uh, I'll just go ahead. I'll just go ahead and say this. Actually, you know what? I keep forgetting. I said I caught three, four pounders this year. I actually caught a fourth. I forgot that when we went. We went on a trip to uh, Indian Lake with him. Uh, middle of November or is that late end October? End October. Is right before end of October. Okay. Um, and uh, I was actually throwing a frog, and uh, it was the opening day of duck season. That's a whole other story. Um, but I just ended up throwing a frog within 15 minutes of being there. I ended up catching one that was. Four, it, it was like four two, four two something like that. I think it went four two six actually. Yeah. To be exact. So it was another four and a quarter. I I struggle on that four and a quarter. But um, um we spent about eight hours up on uh, Indian Lake, which is about an hour north of us, and he caught both we had fish. Two fish. Two, I had fish. two fish for six and a half, a little over six and a half pounds. So I mean, it was a tough. Day and to nobody else we talked to were catching fish that day. It was it was it was, it was tough really day. tough. And part of it was because everybody was laying in red down, or uh, raining. raining lead down on top of our heads. It was the opening day of duck season, and it was bad. It, we, a couple close calls came. Yeah, lead happened. hitting around the boat and stuff. But um, that, like he said, that's a whole other story that's in cool. itself. Um, anyway, back to the jigs. So I guess next you can go with the jigs that have rattles and the jigs that don't have rattles. I, I or, or don't knockers. I don't. One I don't throw jigs with rattles, and I, I never have. And I probably should, but the thing is, is like, it's hard for us to throw jigs in the summer because the one lake we fish, we can fish every day. It's five minutes from our house. We can fish there every day. During the summer, it's super grassy. So if you try to throw a jig, you're wasting your time. And by the time they, the problem is, is they spray that grass. They kill it all off because it's a park. So they don't think it looks good and stuff. They don't care about the fish. And so by the time they spray it all off and kill all the grass, it just sits on the bottom and it's just like throwing your jig into eight inches of muck. So generally we don't throw things that way real a lot. That's why you see me throw a lot finesse. of these finesse jigs because they don't sit in the bottom as far. And so I can do a lot better with them. Um, whereas if you throw like a half ounce football head, it just, it sinks in the bottom and they'll never find it. And I know I've been showing a lot of the heavier jigs, like the half ounce football head. You know, I got a flipping jig here set up, but I do have a lot of the smaller, you know, three eighths ounce um, jigs. I've got three eighths ounce swim jigs, which I find is the perfect size. For I, our I lakes. love three eighths swim jigs, flipping jigs. Um, it, it, it's like our my part, finesse it's the jigs. Perfect size everything three eighths or or lighter, basically for us is is key. Um, even like if I'm fishing my worms deep my big 10 and a half inch worms, or if I throw my cut tail worms, I only throw, I throw less than, less than three eighths generally. Um, so I guess next you could talk about flipping because I know we do a lot of flipping up on uh, Kaiser Lake, up in the pads. Well that, or at our, um, at the, I guess I'm gonna call it our home lake. It, it's basically the one we fish primarily. Uh, I think I fished there over 200 days last year, um, but we have two docks. There's two docks on the whole lake, and it's probably the only two docks that we really can fish around the, around here. We get very small marinas, not a lot of uh, a lot of docks that are good to fish. But there's one in the very corner of the pond that 
always during the summer seems to have fish in it. It's and got it a creek that overlooked. flows in the backside, and so it's got constant flow of water through it. It's cool water, it's in shade, and it's always overlooked. People just walk right over top of it. But when I first started you know, showing him how I was fishing the lake and stuff, I told him, I was like, flip up under there and get ready, because th when they grab a hold of it, they really grab a hold of it under there. And sure enough, now we caught probably dozens. A, two dozen fish, three dozen fish out of this one dock. Um, and sometimes you'd catch three or four out of the same dock within 10 minutes of each other. And there'd be but, no more than a foot of water in front of that Yeah, dock. and sometimes on the back side of the dock where that creek flows in, they'll swim through the, underneath the dock and come out the back side, and it's just tall grass. And they'll sit back up in there because the bait fish push, push back up in there and waiting for insects to come through the creek. And so we'll catch them on the back side of the dock in six, eight inches of water. And, you know, we're catching two and a half, three pounders back there, and people are amazed by it. But yet they still don't fish it for some reason. I have no nobody, idea why. Nobody really fishes it. The only time I ever see people fish it is after I fish it the day before and I catch two or three out of it. And that's the, the only time I'll ever see somebody fish it is the next day. But uh, I guess I'll go back real quick because I don't have a whole lot with knockers on it either or rattles. But um, I, these are two completely different styles of jigs. But you got one here that's just a straight jig. Um, you know, skirt, bait keeper and whatnot. That's, I would call a standard jig. Then you got this one here. You see that little black box? There's actually a little, um, almost like a BB in there. It that, is. They're, they're BBs. That whenever they're, you hop it, every time it hits the ground. Yeah, they you, clack together. It it's, clacks. It's the, same, it's the same rattles that are generally in your crankbaits and stuff. Generally, they can be a little bit bigger, though, uh, being that they're in those rattle casings. So it's also like a crankbait. You got some that make noise. You yeah. know, this so, one and some that are silent. But, uh Okay, now if anybody has a, a good way of storing jigs, I don't like the way I do it. I, I thought it might work, but I really don't. So what I have done is I have all of them in these little tiny baggies that I got at the hobby store. Um, and I thought it was nice because like I could keep like the same jig that's the same color, the same size and everything in one baggie. And so then I could have just a couple baggies basically. But what I quickly realized was is that I have way too many styles of jigs. So like you can see here, I don't know how well you can tell, there's there's actually two jigs in this bag, and so it's nice, right? They're both in here. One's got a trailer on it already and stuff, but then like I've got different color swim jigs. I've got everything in here, and I just ended up with way too many baggies, and it's just not a good system. So I've been trying to come up with a new one, um, but if anybody has any, you know, things that work for them, I'd be glad to hear it. I'm, you know, still trying to figure out something that works right. Um. I guess one of the last types of jigs you've talked about, we you know we talked about the big, you know, half ounce to three quarter ounce flipping jigs, football head exactly. jigs. I could talk about one more. I don't I, I don't have a lot of experience. The one with it. I could talk about that I actually have is a micro jig. So a micro jig, like the title explains, it's micro. So I would I would consider That's the uh, Z Man shroom jig head. I it's would, uh Basically, Ned Rig jig head with uh, a skirt on it, basically, is all it is. So, I would basically consider for where we're at and, you know, everything taken into account, this is our standard size of jig. It's a little 3 8 ounce jig, and then, you know, pretty decent size for the bass. Then you get your little micro jig. It's a whole lot smaller. It gives that whole um, smaller presentation. Um, We've been trying it in the um, the river for smallmouth. Smallmouth. Um, I don't know if you guys caught our... Uh, what, what video was that? Oh, the tackle unboxing. Um, our, we don't get a lot of huge smallmouth around here, you know. We are in Ohio. We don't get anything real big unless we go up to Erie. If we go up to Erie, then we can get some really big ones. But we're, we're in a weird spot because we're too far south for big smallmouth and we're too far north for big largemouth. Yeah. So we're in a really weird spot. Um, and believe it or not, they say if you can fish Ohio, you can fish anywhere, which we found out to be very true. Yeah, we went to help Ned. We just tore them up. Um, but no, the last style I'll talk about, and it actually does have rattles on it. Um, this is actually a uh, called a mop jig. It's a uh, it's a really long skirt, thick skirt. So these are these silicone strands are probably twice as thick, and they're probably twice as long as they normally would be. So and this is here's good. about a, a normal, I would say our our standard size of jig. So. You can see how much longer the skirt is. The skirt's longer than the jig and the trailer all together. 
So this is really good if it's like really hot and you're fishing really slow, or if it's really cold and you're fishing really slow. Those um, you don't have to move the bait a lot, but because they're so long, they get a lot of natural action in the water, and um, because because they get that natural action when you're fishing slow, you can get you get a lot of big bites with these. Um, I haven't had a whole lot of success. Like I said, throwing jigs for us in the summer is really hard. Um, we get a lot of muck, and it's it's just not something we generally go to. Just like throwing deep crankbaits, our, if our lake had hard bottom, I'd be doing it every day. I love throwing crankbaits. It's, you know, it's power fishing. It's a lot more fun than sitting there dragging a worm, but dragging a worm works better for us because of how mucky the bottom is. And it's, it's just more what they want. But um, I know I talked pretty much about all the jigs. I covered all the jigs basically in my box. Uh, you got any more you want to talk about? No, I think, I mean, like I said, I don't carry my swim jigs in this box, really. I've got a few, but my primary ones I throw are the Six Sense Divine ones. Um, uh, but, like, I don't have my swim jigs in here. I don't have my chatterbaits in here. Those have a whole different box. Um, let's see, what else? What else did you talk about? I think that's about it. They, they, there's just one other box that I carry those, those both in. Um, but, uh, you know, we did cover the swim jigs on a very basic level. Yeah, uh, I, I do have a few. Um, a lot of, uh, I think it's Nicholas Lures, I think is the company. Nichols Lures or something like that. They do a lot of spoons, if you guys know them for their spoons. They do, uh, they have a few swim jigs. Mr. Catafox sends those out every once in a while. I have a few of those still um, that I carry in this box. But generally my swim jigs I carry in my chatterbait box. Um, don't forget, if you guys have any other way of storing jigs, uh, leave yeah, I'd, I'd be glad below. to hear it. I'm, I'm, I'm seriously trying to figure out some way to do it. I almost thought of, um, I'm sure you guys have seen the Bass Mafia uh, weight box, the little, the little, uh, the little piece that goes inside the actual terminal t tackle box, um, the that has the sliding top. I almost thought of doing something like that where I could stick the jig heads down into each of those sections. So I know you store yours in the bag, and you're looking for a new way to do it. Um, I basically just have a 3600 box divided up, uh, not really basic on size, but more on the color than anything. I else. could do that, but the problem is, is I just I have too many jigs. They just they get all over the place, and then I can't find them anyway. See, I've got just the right amount. Yeah, I, I've got enough for one 3600. I could box just start feed. pulling out all the ones I don't use, and then just leaving in the ones I do use, and I may end up going to that, but. I'll have to wait until until I decide really what what I want to do. But like I said, guys, if you guys have a way of storing your jigs that works out, you know, really good for you, uh, leave it in the comments so he can uh, maybe attempt to do it. Um, but I think that's all we got for this tackle talk today on jigs. I'd say the next one's probably gonna be frogs. Frogs, topwater. I, I know we like doing frogs, topwater. That's big. It. Especially uh, for us, it's really big. Spring and early summer here, yeah, it, it's a good time to do it. Mm -hmm. um, Before they spray our lakes, we can we can whale on them with frogs. But I, like I said, guys, I think that's all we got for you on this tackle talk, and uh, just get, you know, look forward to the next one. You know, it's a good series, and hopefully we have a lot more episodes. And if go. there's something we you want us to cover, be sure to let us know because I I'm sure we have it. I'm sure I have it at least. Or if not, I'm sure I can sit here and just talk to you about it. You know, read up on it. And yeah. Find out enough information to give you guys a video on it. So hopefully uh, we can get that worked out for you guys. And, you know, like I said, I think that's all we got for you today. So uh, 